okay guys welcome to the last video in this model model 3 conditional control structures so in the last video uh, where we solved the first challenge for this model I gave a question and let's see the question I gave so I gave this question I said um, okay this is what they have here let's see if that's the beginning of this section okay yeah that's it so they said um, position on shares board are identified by letters by letter and a number the letter identifies the column while the number identifies the goal as shown below I guess you can all see the diagram for the goals we have 8 goals from 1 to 8 for the columns we have 8 from A down to H I think that's it so let's see what they want us to do they say we should write a program that reads a position from the user. Use an if statement to determine if the column begins with a black square or a white square. Then use modular arithmetic to report the color of the square in that row. For example, if the user enters A1, then your program should report that the square is black. A1. That's the square being black. If the user enters d5 then your program should report that the square is white d5 this d5 it is white okay you see your program may assume that a valid position will always be entered it does not need to perform any error checking so obviously they are making it simple for us let's not perform any error checking now they've asked us to use the if statement but we are going to use the if statement and also we'll use turn error operator for this okay so that will drive home everything will basically land in this model so if i enter c5 what's going to be my result c5 this is c and this is 5 that's a black square so the question becomes hey how do we use modular arithmetic to solve this okay so just think for a minute this is what we're going to do we have from 1 to 8 quite all right that's cool okay the colors are changing they are consecutive they are, they are changing they're alternating so i have one two three four that's what's happening the colors are changing white black white black white cool now next thing look at on the go we have a b c down to h what's happening here what if i assume a to be a one or a to be a zero you can assume any of these you want okay they should be consecutive in terms of natural numbers or all the all the rest. So let's say I assume A to be a 1. If this is 1, 1 plus 1 will give me 2. So get the picture. 1 plus 1 is a 2, that is a black. I'm assuming B to be 2. If, if I say 1, this will be 2, this will be 3, this will be 4, this will be 5, this will be 6, 7, 8. So if I say this is 1, 1 plus 1, that will give me a 2, 2 is a black. 1 plus 2 that will give me a 3 3 is a white 1 plus 3 that is a 4 4 is a black okay let's see now what if i have 1 plus this is 2 that's a white 1 plus 3 that's a black so 1 plus 3 is a 4 that's a black okay now if you notice what I ha what is happening here when i add them whenever i'm getting something even the result is a black Whenever I'm getting something odd, the result is a white. Let's try it again. Let's try D5, the axis for D5 then. So D and 5, that's a white. Which means that's meant to be odd. Is that true? So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then yeah, this is 5. 5 plus 4, that's 9. White. That's correct. So if you're following the trail, you'll notice that even... I have black, odd, I have white. So which means I can simply use the remainder theorem or not the remainder theorem, like they said modular arithmetic. I'll try to get this two, then divide it by two. If my result is a one, then it is white. If my result is a zero, then it is black. So that's basically what we are going to do here. Okay? We are going to use the modular arithmetic the axis for will convert this column down to numbers 
then whenever we get a one as the remainder it is white whenever we get a zero it is black so hope that makes sense if it doesn't go ahead and put it in the comment below i'm um, after everything i'll see how i can address it again okay um so let's move down to our id and see what we can do with this so the first thing we need to do is to say hey how do we um get the position since the user is entering a string the user is going to enter something like this let me give us how we move about uh, I'll, I'll take this in so let's say the user is going to give us something like um, a4 so how do we convert a down to the number so what we are going to do here is this if i have imp for instance i'm going to have a couple of string i can call them code since now i'm trying to use string for this now the reason i'm using string for this is we've not discussed dictionary and lists with dictionary this would have been easy where we have key value pair hey for one make for a make it one for two for b make it two for c make it three that would have been the case but since we've not said dictionary and also we've not done this i'm going to use string for the all of this for the all of this so what i'm going to do is to have a b c d e f g h i think that's it one two three four five so this is what i have now this a is meant to be one but you know how string works how indexing in python works a is having an index of zero so if a is having an index of zero what do we do so basically what we do if we want to extract a we extract a the index of a then we add one to that index that's what we are going to do okay so i, I would have decided to work with zero base indexing based on them um, but since we've used one, two, three for A, B, C, and the rest of that, let us stick to that so that we won't go back and start restructuring uh, the pattern we've got already. So what I'm going to do is this. I can extract this first element by using int of, that should be zero. That will give me the first element, right? So if that's given the first element, what I have to do is to look for the index of this first element. This is that's given the first element. So I look for the index of this first element within code. So if you recall from string operation, I can say code dot index. I can also use find, but there is no need since we are not error checking. So I can say give me the index of the first entry there. That's going to be a zero. The once I've gotten that index, I can convert this index to an integer so I'll convert it to an integer so you can see now it's an integer then I'll add one to it so this is going to be the position of the alphabet that's what we are going to do so if I change this to F F is that position this is meant this is index 0 1 2 3 4 5 right that's 5 but I want it to be a 6 but if we are counting based on our structure, based on this structure, this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we want it to be a 6. So I'll do the same thing. This is F. So I'll run this again so that we'll see if that's going to be 6. That's 6, correct. So we've gotten one thing down. So next we need to extract this element also. How do I extract this element? So for us to extract that element, it's as simple as we're saying um index or not index just give us imp of minus one that's the last element but whatever you get convert it to an integer okay that will give me that one so what i need to do now is to add these two results and look for module two adding these two results means let's say i save this with um, let's say alphabet position let's call it alphabet position and I save this in okay let's let's call this column position right that that should be is it column or go that should be go position so let's call it go position and let's call this column position so I'll call this column position and I'll save it in a variable so what I need to do now is to add the go position to column position right column position whatever results I get from this I'll divide by 2 and get the remainder 
and I want to see if the remainder is going to be a 0 or a 1. So here the remainder and there is an error there. Why? Go position is not defined. I thought I gave it to go position. Why is it not defined? Oh, I didn't run this. Okay, now it should be defined. Okay, so that's a 0. Okay, so that's what we are going to use. I've given you all the, should I call them breadcrumbs? Yeah, the breadcrumbs that we can use in writing this program. So let's go ahead and write this program to see what we have. So we'll write everything from the scratch. So I ask the user for um, the cell. So let's say I'll ask the user for the cell. So I'll say inputs, enter a cell label. Let's call it cell label. So the user will enter the cell label. So once the user enter the cell label, we are going to get the go position of that cell label. So what I'm going to do is I'll copy all I have here. Right on to start writing that again. This is simply the go position. Right? But now all I have to do is to change instead of imp, I'm going to change it to cell. And just to make everything to be contained. I'll take this code down to that position, down to that particular cell, so that everything will be contained in one cell. So this is the row position, right? So let's say the column position. I think I'm reversing this too. This is meant to be the call. This is for the alphabet. So that let's make that the column position. So now let's see the row position. Sorry guys for that. So for the row position, what I have here. We already said the goal position is going to be this. So I have the goal position, right? Now let's see the position of the element. So the position of the element is going to be row position plus the column position. So now here comes what they really want us to do. So we need to ask if the position divided by 2 gives you a remainder of 1 go ahead and print that the cell I think for one we said the cell is going to be white yes that's what we have the cell is white but if that's not the case so else prints that the cell is black so we are going to test this and then we use standard operator for it okay so what should we try? Let's try E3, which is a black cell. Let's try E3 and see what it's going to give to us. So let's say, hey, this is meant to be E3. The cell is white, and that is an issue. E3, E123. So the cell is meant to be black, and we're having white. Why are we having white? They said if it is 1, the cell is white. If the remainder is 1. So this is for black, this is for white, that's correct. So why is it giving us white? E is what? Let's see. E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, that's, that's meant to be black. Why is it giving us white? Why is it giving us white? Oh, what, 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 what? What's the problem? Oh, um, I hate this. Oh, I see. I see. This is the issue. Sorry about that, guys. So it's meant to be cell. So let's try it again. So let's say E3. And that's the black. Correct. So let's try something else. So let's try F. Five, F five is meant to be white. Let's try F five. So now I have F five, and F five is white. So that's correct. So you can see it is actually working fine. You can go ahead and give it some exhaustive tests. <laughs> There's no problem. So what I have to do now, I want to use something else. So I have to use tenor operator to solve this problem now. So for me to use tenor operator, I'm just going to take out these cells, everything here, and make it one line. Okay. So what I have to do is say, hey, print this. This should be what you print. If the remainder 
gives you a one but if that's not the case go ahead and print this and that's I'm gonna take away all of this okay and that should do it so let's try a1 a1 is black let's try d5 which is meant to be white d5 is white so it is working fine guys so I hope um, with this few point of mine I've been able to convince you <laughs> that 10 hour operators actually um, suck up a whole lot of um, um, large set of code you're meant to write okay so that's what we did here so instead of four lines we're using one line and um, that is making our code to look a little bit fine I should say so that's the last video this is the last video for this model so in the next video we are going to be looking at some data types we are going to start with lists then we come to tuple dictionaries and then sets okay and then we are going to look at some fun questions there and that's for model 4 then in model 5 we look at loops repetitive structure so that's guys my video is helping you in any way don't forget to like subscribe um, put down your comment in the description sec in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next video.